Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, this week is not so much a tech tip, but we're going to do a couple tech tips. And actually what we're doing is we're answering some questions from the, from the past YouTube videos that we've done, and particularly the ones we just didn't answer. Um, so why not answer them now? So I've got a cue card full of questions, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, let's start. So the first one on our uh, ZFS best practices video, I think Mitch, Mitch did this one. Uh, the question was from JG Wren, and uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Um, their, their comment was, everyone, it's no substitute for a proper backup. I assume he's talking about snapshots. No one ever. Hey, this is what a proper backup is. And you know, I, I can't help but fault the guy. He's kind of right. Everyone always yells about how snapshots aren't backups, but they don't really say how they can be used for backups. And so, screw all that technical jargon, any of that. A backup is another copy or multiple copies of your data, not in the same physical server, ideally not even in the same building. Put it in the cloud, put it in a private cloud, put it in another server in another location. Just do not leave it in the same server and do not rely on your snapshots alone. Snapshots are useful for taking a quick little image of the data and sending it off somewhere, but uh, so there. That's what a proper backup is. Another copy of your data, not in your server, ideally not in the same building. Put it in the cloud, put it somewhere else, put it in your pocket. I don't know, that was a joke. Um, the next one was, uh, was a question about, on our video, building RPM packages by Matrix One. Uh, Mr. Neo, no, I'm just kidding. Um, they wanted to see how to create a manual spec file from, from scratch. And they wanted a full description of, of the full specification of RPM spec file. So uh, first of all, <laughs> I don't think you know what you asked. That's a big question. There's a lot to understand with RPM spec file. So I can't even begin to explain what everything means. <laughs> uh, I do understand that that video we shot, we did kind of build it from a setup.py. Um, so that is one little subset. Um, so, uh, Matrix One, stay tuned. I'll do uh, I'll do one where we build uh, our 45 drives tool package. We had to make that whole spec file from hand. Uh, I'll do that on screen and, and we can see that, so stay tuned. But I will not be giving a comprehensive rundown of how RPM spec files work because I don't know everything about that. So I'll show you what I do know. Um, on our video, six open cast caching methods. Vlad asked us, can OpenCast be used on other software RAIDs, Unraid, MD-ADM, Gluster? And he says, I assume not ZFS because ZFS has its own caching hybrid stuff. Um, so remember, OpenCast is the open source caching software that you can use, uh, particularly Optane NVMe or really any flash and spinning and make a block device for use for another uh, layer on top. So. I'm not talking about Unraid. Unraid's kind of its own operating system. Uh, they control what comes in and out of Unraid, where the other ones are more like kind of software tools you can find on different operating systems. So, yes, you can use OpenCast devices under M80, MADM. You can use them with ClusterFS, and you can use them with ZFS too. Because really, remember, at the end of the day, this is low level. This is, this is at the disk level. So you're making a relatively faster device than what you had before by taking the two and merging them together. So by all means, yeah, you can experiment and use OpenCast devices under all those technologies. Thanks for that one, Vlad. Um, and my last one for the day here, uh, oh, we got that one stuck. My last one for the day here, uh, this is a, a two-parter. This was on our OpenCast plus Ceph video where I actually made some OpenCast devices and then I built a Ceph cluster out of them. Um, uh, Valeric and, a, and another person, Jason Eng, both asked a question. Valeric first just kind of said, hey, I'm having issues with this. It looks like LVM's rejecting the cast device. Um, I can't get it to work. Uh, of course, I paraphrased that. He had much more. Um, you're correct. By default, LVM will filter out a cast device. So what you have to do in the LVM conf, you have to tell it to not filter it out. Um, I probably should have watched that video before I did this. I don't remember if I covered that or not. Um, anyway, that's what has to happen. 
etsylvm.conf under uh, devices, you, you put a list of allowed ones in and CAS, C-A-S would be that. Now moving on to the second one, or sorry, not to the second question, but the second point of that, um, in that video, I believe I used Ceph ADM to build that cluster, which means I built it with containers, which means I would have used the default official image that got pulled down by uh, the Ceph devs. They maintain that. And by default, their LVM conf does not have that filter in. So what I did to get around that is I pull that down. I've been maintaining my own um, image. So what I do is I pull their image down, add that to the conf, and then upload it. So it's on uh, my Docker Hub. Well, I guess our Docker Hub 45 drives. So uh, we'll, we'll put the link in this video. So hopefully you guys see that. Um, and then Jason Eng kind of came through and asked the second question. Uh, he was kind of wondering the same question as Villaric, but on top of that, in Ceph, how did I specify, if I'm understanding this question correctly, how did I give it a separate device class? Because in Ceph, I can use a bunch of different devices. Uh, hard drives, SSDs, NVMEs, and those three will each, like if you do a Ceph OSD tree, it'll show you an OSD as a hard drive, if it's an SSD, if it's an NVME. Um, but you also can just create a custom uh, device class. So what I did is I knew which OSDs were made with underlying CAS devices. I r deleted their current device class, and then I recreated uh, their device class to be CAS, and that way I could use them separately from everything else. So um, yeah, that's, that's that. Anyway, we'll put the Docker Hub um, link in this video and we'll go find this comment and we'll post it on there too. So uh, um, that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching that. Thank you for your questions. See, even when we don't answer them right away, they will eventually get answered. I had fun doing this segment. I'd like to do it again. So keep asking questions. I hope you learned something on there. Hope you found it entertaining, and uh, we'll catch you next week.